In this video, we are going to take you along as my husband Damien turns a massive stone into a unique, custom, and attention demanding piece for a customer's new barn home. So when we poured the floor for the house and shop for these folks, this new house, the lady of the house had a bunch of stone from her grandfather's farm. She wanted to know if we could utilize any of them into the house, incorporate them somehow. So we took the biggest one and used it. Uh, it was six, eight foot six long, three foot wide at the widest point, 22 inches thick at the widest point. It weighed, we were guessing, probably 3,400 pounds at the beginning. This thing had a pretty rough surface, the top we were going to use, so I wound up just kind of knocking the high the high spots off i wanted to see some character but uh, i did uh, take the hammer and chisel and whatnot and uh, tried to level it off somewhat Okay, here it was too wide. It had a little knot sticking out on the back and I had to get it flush to go flush with the back wall because they're using a thin backsplash. It was probably one of the hardest parts of the deal is getting the back straight and flush. Here, I'd scored out the dimensions of the sink. I basically just cut a bunch of lines where the sink's going, take a chisel, just start taking out material. Kind of tedious, but uh, it works. Back on the flushing the backside off, I'd scored it as deep as I could with the saw. I'm just using some chisels and wedges and trying to pop the backside off, get as much material off there as I can.
we have the basics, basic shape on the stone ready. And this is at our house. We're loading it back up to take it to the customer's property. It's roughly 12 miles away. Now we're at the customer's home using his skid loader to unload it and we're able to get the skid in the shop and we're lucky that we have a straight shot from the shop into the kitchen, one doorway. And now though at the widest point the sink is 28 inches so it's a 3-0 door so now we're just trying to jack it up and get it on pedestals so that we are about a half inch higher than we want the finished product. I'm laying three little block columns for the stone to sit on. It's more structurally sound than sitting on wood. When we're done with the project, they'll be completely covered. It'll all be veneered over. You'll not see anything. We'd wheel the stone over the, the blocks. Like I said before, we left it a half inch higher than we wanted as finished product. And right now we are just jacking the stone up to get the blocks out from underneath it. Well, 
here I'm epoxying the top the uh, we had a little humidity issues we had a lot of a lot of moisture outside we were heating with propane besides the little fight with humidity it turned out pretty nice These are the customers, and at the moment, I think they're a little concerned, wondering what kind of mess I've made. They're, I think, interested in, in seeing what the finished product's gonna, gonna turn out to be. To get it to this finish point with moving it and everything involved, I have 111 hours in this rock to this point. Here we have the sink pretty much ready. Now I have to acid stain the floors and they're going to get their cabinetry prepared and then I'll come in behind that and do the concrete countertops and epoxy of those and they'll be able to move in. And I sure appreciate the work these customers have allowed us to do.